This week on TGC News, a new Aimpoint slide rider, a new pistol from Bull Armory, and market research on the ammo crisis and why people are buying so much. Wooks makes high performance outdoor gear with class. Whether you're in need of a chassis like the Furiosa, which merges beauty and functionality, or maybe you want a blade dripping with style and made from Rock 62 steel, or maybe you need to do some serious chopping with one of their axes, Wooks offers some of the best crafted outdoor gear in the world. And now you can use our promo code TGC15 to get 15% off your order from today until May 31st over at Wooks store.com that's tgc15 at wookstore.com welcome back to another episode of the gun collective news the only gun news show that covers things you actually care about my name is john Patton. if you're new here consider getting subscribed to stay up to date on new guns and gun accessories and industry news and stuff like that now how about some news about two years ago aimpoint released something really unique to the pistol optic game called the acro p1 or advanced combat reflex optic. It was a fully enclosed emitter system, meaning the laser being projected onto the screen, aka the dot, was completely enclosed. The whole thing was. That means no debris like mud, dirt, sand, water, or other materials can get in there and hinder its performance. The housing itself is made from aluminum. It also had a ton of different mounting options. There was a, a lot. That being said, there were apparently some improvements to make because the Acro P2 just hit the market. It still has that enclosed system, which is neat, but there are some improvements. It has a more common 2032 battery and some improved electronics, which means the battery life has been taken from 1.5 years all the way up to five years of constant on. They've also improved the buttons for changing brightness. Apparently it's more tactile. And they also say it can take more than 20,000 rounds of 40 Smith & Wesson being fired and it'll keep going. It sounds like it could be pretty rad. Also, shout out to Aimpoint for their completely over the top dramatized launch video. It was like a weird cologne commercial or something. I am very curious to see what reviews have to say about this one. I am far from an expert on pistol optics, but when you consider that this is largely different than so many others on the market, it could be pretty rad. The MSRP is going to sting a little bit at 599 bucks, but if it holds up and stays true to their claims, it's probably worth it. You guys know the drill. I am always looking for your thoughts on stuff like this. Unload in the comments and let's talk about it. In new gun news this week, Bull Armory has announced a new one. It's called the Axe and you guessed it, it takes Glock mags. We actually looked at these at the last SHOT Show back in 2020. There are two sizes and then three different variants within those two sizes. There is the compact and full size version. And then within that, there are the cleaver, which is sort of the least aggressive slide texture. And then there's the hatchet, which is your middle ground. And then the tomahawk, which is the whiz bang version with optic cuts, slide cuts for viewing the barrel and lightening it, and then a fluted barrel inside. They all have the same uniquely textured grip as well as a flat face trigger, 1911 grip angle, flared mag well, and some other nice add-ons. And according to Bull Armory, they will be very competitively priced. They didn't give me a specific number. That was how they described it to me. We may not know for a while what the actual price is because these are not available in the US just yet, but because Bull has a growing presence here, that might change. Hopefully it, it will. I am hopeful because I enjoy a lot of what they make, I suppose time will tell. As per usual, SIG has yet another new version of the P320. This one is called the P320 AXG Pro, and it's the first full-size version of the AXG segment of the P320 family. Essentially, they've taken that aluminum grip module and slapped a full-size slide on it with the viewing ports on the slide and a sort of mouth cut as well as the optic cut on top. It comes with a flared magwell. I guess that kind of extends it to full size, 17 round mags with aluminum base plates, a flat face trigger, and SIG's X-Ray 3 day-night sights. All in all, it seems like a great pistol, especially if it's legal for the various competition stuff out there. I'm not sure on that though. I have no idea, there's so many rules. 
And as per usual, SIG refuses to put prices on their website or press releases, so I'm just going to make it up. The P320 AXG Pro has an MSRP of three thumbtacks, a half a ream of paper, and a motivational poster. That seems affordable. Before we get into our industry news, I want to give a shout out to the Gold Brothers for making another record-breaking shot. For reference, Aaron and Steve Gold are a pair of exhibition shooters, and recently they were able to connect on a clay target at 180 yards away with a 12-gauge shotgun. That is impressive. Congrats to the boys for making that happen. I want to try that now. That seems like fun. Now, some industry news for you guys. Stealth Project, a company known for making suppressors, has been acquired by another company you probably haven't heard of, Alliance Outdoor Group. Alliance owns Rambo bikes, which are electric bikes that are supposedly designed for hunting. I mean, camo, I guess, is the only thing different about it. Uh, I don't know. As well as two different tree stand companies. With a seemingly hunting-based portfolio and the growth of hunting with suppressors in recent years, this makes a lot of sense in my brain. In other industry news, CZ's acquisition of Colt is complete. All of the regulatory BS in both the US and Canada has been handled, and now they can finally get to making Colt a worthwhile brand again. I'm very curious to see how this merger pans out. It could be a very good thing in the long run. Also in industry news, Southwick & Associates, a market research company, has released some really interesting info that basically says that ammunition demand is not going to slow down anytime soon. They conducted a poll in April 2021, and with 1,800 plus responses, they were able to generate enough decent data. In 2020, four out of five people ran into out-of-stock notices when they went to buy ammo, and a similar trend still continues in 2021, with 75% still having that issue. That has led to at least 50% of hunters and shooters they polled reducing or canceling the amount of related activities that they were doing. They also said to expect demand to remain high because nearly two thirds of the people polled indicated that their ammo inventory was lower than they preferred. Only 17% of people said that they were satisfied with how much ammo they had on hand. The reasoning behind the ammo demand is something I'm sure you have all felt within the past 18 months. Uncertainty about ammo supply, future restrictions on ammo, and economic uncertainty ranked high, with people wanting to just get out and shoot slash hunt more being included in there as well. So with that being said, I hope you like paying inflated prices because like I've said many times over, this stuff isn't going to stop anytime soon. I'd love to hear your opinion on the Kermit ammo situation in your world. So if you feel up to it, shoot us a message on theguncollective.com telling us all about your experience. Sylvan Arms makes parts for your gun right here in the USA. Whether you're looking for a side folding adapter, or maybe a flared magwell, or maybe something to shoot nine out of your standard AR lower, they've got you covered. Sylvan Arms is an affordable alternative to many popular parts on the market right now. And to make it more affordable, use our code TGC10 over at sylvanarms.com to get 10% off your entire order. The only thing that stops a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. This week, our good guy with a gun is a random bystander. This took place in Tucson, Arizona towards the end of April this year. According to news reports, a man was assaulting his girlfriend in the parking lot of a bank, and she was able to sort of break away, get away, and grab someone for help. She actually got into the bystander's car as the boyfriend came over and verbally confronted them. During that confrontation, the bystander pulled his handgun and shot the boyfriend, which led to him no longer existing. No arrests were made as of the time of writing slash filming this. This is a complex story, guys, so I wanna try and think this out. Imagine sort of being out running errands and some lady comes over begging for help, and then you're met with an angry boyfriend coming at the both of you. As they say, the time chooses you, and it sounds like this guy's time was chosen to help this woman. I want to know what you guys think on this one. I want to hear your thoughts. What would you do if someone came up to you in a similar situation? Do you avoid it? Do you like say, hey, I can't really help? Do you think you would even have a chance to avoid it? What would you do? Drop your thoughts and answers in the comments. 
and let's talk about it. It's now time for Friendly Fire, the segment where I answer questions from you guys. This time, our questions are coming from the TGC Nation Facebook group, which you definitely need to join. Our first question is from Seth Shockey, and he says, why don't more companies make revolvers with rails for lights or lasers? Honestly, I think the amount of people that want that is very low, and the small amount of revolvers with rails sort of service that group. I certainly wouldn't oppose more options, though. Weston Dawson says, with the current price of firearms, are you still buying or are you letting things cool off for a while? I am answering this personally. So honestly, I only buy stuff when I have to have it or it's something I've wanted for a long time. I rarely ever buy out of panic. However, that is with the knowledge that I already have a healthy collection of stuff on hand. So I'm not rushing to get stuff. This next one is sort of a combo question. Chris Binkley says, do you recommend keeping a carry gun stock? And Mike Hansen says, how do you feel about optics on a carry pistol? We've actually covered this in the past in uh, an episode of The Legal Brief. The way I look at this is that most modifications that can be made to a carry gun can be argued by a good lawyer as a positive addition to the gun. However, I would stay away from sayings on the gun or Punisher skulls or anything like that on a carry gun. Not only is it douchey to have like a Punisher skull on there, but a jury may not look favorably on that stuff. This is also without intimate knowledge of laws across the country that may hinder adding modifications. I don't know what your laws are, so look into that before you decide to do that. Chris Moore says, when is the Vantage Arms 612 shotgun going to be available? For those that are unaware, the 612 has been sort of vaporware product for years now, and it's essentially a 12 gauge revolver. I went to their website for the first time in a few years when you asked this question, and I saw that they now show a hunting slash field version with like wood furniture on it, which looks really cool. <laughs> it's kind of exciting. The way I knew it before was with the sort of master key, I don't know, military police application that they were selling previously. I called it vaporware because it seemingly isn't going anywhere. I would freaking love to see this at the market in a real way, but who knows when or if that'll happen? There's been threats of it before and it hasn't come to fruition. My friendly fire question to you guys this week. What do you think is the most overused term or phrase in the gun industry right now? What are people just beating the crap out of? Sound off in the comments below. And if you want to ask a friendly fire question, jump over to thegungcollective.com and send it our way. And that is it for this week's show, guys. If you enjoyed it, hit the thumbs up button. I would really appreciate that. Also, check out the secret affiliate link down in the comments and the description, probably. Sorry, running on very little sleep, guys. And, of course, get subscribed if you want to see more news every single week. And, as always, thank you all for watching. We'll see you soon. Yep, it's over. But don't worry, you can click on the video up top to watch last week's show. And the one below that is the one that YouTube thinks you'll enjoy. Check them out and let me know what you think.